Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God is good. God is a great God. Um, welcome to another episode of the Empowerment Desk, where the power is. I am your host, Minister Siobhan Matthew, and I'm so excited just to share the word of the Lord with you. Um, today's program might be, um, it, it's a bit different because um, I am doing a, a, a recording for uh, Men of Purpose uh, Ministries in, um, um, in House of Restoration. So I, I just want to thank them for this opportunity as well, just to bring forth the word of God. Um, tonight, I want to talk about covenant, covenant, um, and what is a covenant and the different types of covenant. But, but, but more, more tonight, I want to study the Abrahamic covenant. And I just thank again, men of purpose for this opportunity to do a, a brief exaltation or a brief study on the topic covenant. Um, specifically dealing with the Abrahamic covenant. Amen. Even before I start, I would just like us to open in a word of prayer. Father, I just thank you for your word and let your word go forth with power. Let your word change lives tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Covenant. In Psalms chapter 9, um, verse, verse 34, I want to start with, with, with this reading tonight. Psalm, Psalms chapter 89, verse 34, as we, as we study the topic, the Abrahamic covenant tonight. Bless the name of Jesus. Psalms 89 verse 34. And that's it. Psalms 89 verse 34, it says, My covenant I will not break, nor alter the things that is gone out of my lips. If you, if you study the Bible, you realize that God makes covenant his servants. There are different men of God throughout the, the, the time, throughout the era of the Bible, that God made covenants with these men. Um, um, I, he made covenants with David. He made a covenant with, 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 with Noah. He made a covenant with Abraham. He made a covenant with Moses. And, and, and he made a covenant with the New Testament saints. And so we have to find out what is a covenant. The Bible says that God will not break his covenant. He is a covenant keeping God. So when, when do we say the word covenant? When I said that God made a covenant with Abraham, what is a covenant? Um, a covenant is a strong agreement between two parties. I want to say this, a covenant is two agreement between two parties. Matter of fact, to have a covenant, you require two parties. You can't make a covenant on your own. It has to be you and some, somebody else or, or a group of persons or a tribe. A covenant is an agreement between two parties. And like I said, throughout the Bible, God made this specific, made agreements with his people. He made a, a, an agreement with himself and David. He made an agreement with himself and David. He made an agreement with himself and Moses. He made himself, uh, he made an agreement with himself and the New Testament church. And, and then one thing I realized about the covenant is that each covenant have different terms and different conditions. And something I just want to drop out there. That's why as New Testament church, we have to understand the covenant that we have and the covenant that Moses have and the covenant that Abraham have. And I find sometimes in Christianity, we have the proclivity to mix up the covenants. We, um, for example, we have to understand now that we are in under the covenant of grace. We no longer under the Mosaic covenant. Let me just say this as well. For example, um, in the Mosaic covenant, your, your blessing was required. Your blessing was given to you based on your performance. In other words, um, God said, I will heal you if you keep my commandments. I will bless you if you do this. Everything was based on your performance. But on the new, in the New Testament, the new covenant that God has made with us, it's not based on our, uh, on our performance anymore because Christ Jesus himself um, has done it for us. So it's our faith that brings forth the, the, the blessings of God into manifestation. So we have to understand that different um, times and different pe people and different persons that God made covenant with them and it was just um, 
the, the rules were different and i must stress on this um the covenant that god made with us now is different from what he made with with Moses just for example under the Mosaic covenant it was required that that you kept the law and then um, and then if you if, if you keep the law you have to keep the Sabbath and things of this sort but under under the New Testament of grace it's not about keeping this it's about having faith in Jesus Christ so every covenant has a different specific rule and a specific guidelines that guides every covenant I hope I get this thing clear and um, so we said a covenant is, 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 um, is an agreement between two parties. And, and I want to I wanna focus primarily tonight on the Abrahamic covenant. Now, we, we, we want to look into the, the Abrahamic covenant. And it starts in Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord, the, the Lord said to Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house unto a land I will show thee. Um, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. So this is what God is telling Abraham. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this covenant with you. God appeared to Abraham and he said, I'm going to do this for you and your descendants. Um, and it, it says that, um, and, and I will bless thee, and I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curse thee, and there shall be, and there shall all families of the earth be blessed. And this was it. This is where the Abraham covenant started. And this is what God said, I will do for you, Abraham. And then, and then as you go throughout the Bible, you realize that God keep adding to the promises for example god promised him land and god promised him that the um that the, the entire world will be blessed through him and we as we go later in the studies we'll see how jesus christ fulfilled that 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 that, that um that covenant you know and then um some covenants are conditional and some are unconditional the abrahamic covenant uh, it was an unconditional covenant. The actual covenant is found in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. And the ceremony recorded indicates that the, indicates the unconditional nature of the covenant. When a covenant was dependent upon both parties keeping commitments, then both parties would pass the pieces of animal, would pass between the pieces of the animal. God also moved between half of the animals. Abraham was in a deep sleep. God's solitary action indicates that the covenant is principally his promise. He binds himself to the covenant. Let me just explain this thing for you. In other words, um, in that covenant, God was the one that bound himself to the promise. Abraham didn't have to do anything because when they were doing the ceremony for the covenant, God himself, because you have to understand sometimes when in the Old Testament, when a covenant was, was taking place between two parties, they would pass between the animals. And then, but this time God placed Abraham in a sleep and he alone walked through the animal, which indicate that I am the one that gonna do it, amen? So in the Abrahamic covenant, God appeared to Abraham and told Abraham, I will bless thee, I will make a great nation out of thee. And, but the, the interesting dynamics in this covenant is that it just shows how God can take someone from anywhere and make a promise to them and bless them. You have to understand who Abraham was. Abraham was married to Sarah and Sarah himself, Sarah herself, her womb was shut and her womb was dead. And here you have a promise. Here is a God saying, Sarah, I'm going to bless you. A nation's going to come out of you. But wait for a minute. Sarah's womb is not functioning properly. Sarah's womb is dead. Um, Romans 4, 8, verse 18, verse 19 said, Against all hope, in hope, Abraham believed God. Now, to one, let me explain this. The terms of the conditions, I will make a great nation out of you. The Jewish nation came out of you. But Abraham has a problem. His wife cannot conceive and even in that covenant that Abrahamic covenant we see the majesty of God we see how God can take someone with a disability like Sarah someone with a medical condition like Sarah her womb is not working it is dead 
and God in his faithfulness can achieve and bring forth his word without no human intervention. So bless the name of Jesus. Whatever God has said to you, whatever God has promised you, just like he promised Abraham, this is what I'm going to do for you. You're going to have a child and nations going to come out of you. And, and it doesn't matter what is going on with Sarah. If I have said it, I will bring it to pass. I want to place a little emphasis on this, that if God has made a promise to you, if God has made an agreement with you, it doesn't matter the condition. It doesn't matter what is happening, that God can bring it to pass. God made nations, nations and king out of a man that, 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 that his wife, that his wife, glory be to God, could not bear children. His wife, that, 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 that a womb was shut. But yet still, because God had promised Sarah this in, in the covenant, in the Abrahamic covenant, God was able to bring it to pass. And even before I go to my next point, um, Sarah herself, and Abraham, as you well know, that they tried to assist God. They tried to assist God in making that promise come to pass. And that's where you find that, that, that Sarah um, allowed Abraham to, to, to go in, in um, sexual relations with, the, with their maid, which, which is called um, Hannah. And glory be to God. And then um, if you have to understand, Ishmael came out of the situation so 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 this is one thing we can learn in the abrahamic covenant that um god don't need your help to bring it to pass whatever god have said abraham tried to make the covenant work himself but it just couldn't happen uh, my god i don't know what god have promised somebody and you trying to make it happen you have to learn to rest in the promise of God that if God said it God will bring it to pass when God gave Abraham the word and gave Abraham the covenant God never asked Abraham to help him out so sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm learning a lot from from this story um, and Ishmael as you know he was a troubled child and that that is where the Ishmaelite came from and the Palestine came from and they were the enemies of the Jewish people all of this happened simply because somebody did not have the faith to believe God so they went and do their own thing or own thing on their own and I want to encourage somebody tonight that God is a covenant keeping God whatever God have said whatever God have told you come on somebody that God will bring it to pass God came to Abraham and said Abraham you will have a child and you have to understand in that covenant it took time sometimes we we, we, we believe in God and and, and 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 God told us something and and it didn't happen in 10 years or eight years we ready to give up I want to say this tonight that if, if God has said it I don't care how long it takes come on somebody it will come to pass I'm just trying to show you the, the little lesson that we can learn even in this uh, as we go deeper into the studies that when God has said something when God have, have made a promise when God have made a covenant he do not need the assistance of anyone else he himself will do it my God uh, and, 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 and it took time, like I was saying. It did not happen, the first, matter of fact, I think it happened when Abraham was in his 90s. But, uh, but, but time, time does not mean that you will not get the promise. So I want to encourage somebody tonight, do not get weary at whatever God has promised you. Just like in the Abrahamic covenant, God says, nations, Abraham, it will come out of you. Uh, and it took time, but eventually nations did come out of Abraham. Nations and Jesus Christ. And when, when God told Abraham, the entire world will be blessed through you and your descendants, my God, that Christ was a was a, a manifestation of that covenant because the entire world through putting their faith in Jesus Christ has been blessed so despite Abraham 
dysfunctionality, I might say, despite Abraham's weakness, God chose him on purpose and God brought greatness out of him because he is a promise keeper. He is, he will not break his covenant. Whatever he has said, my God, I want to say this, he will bring it to pass. Um, Numbers chapter 23, 19, that God is not a man that he should lie. Matter of fact, in, in, in the book of First Peter, I believe, he said that God is not slack concerning his promises. So whatever God has promised, he will bring it to pass just like he promised Abraham. Uh, the Abrahamic covenant included the promise of land. It was a specific land and an actual property with dimension in specific. God gave Abraham all the land that he can see. The gift is declared to be forever. God was not going to, 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 to um, rearrange his promise. The territory given as part of the Abrahamic covenant is, ex is expanded is explained in Deuteronomy, but let me just let me just take a, a little. God, not only that, God told Abraham, "Your descendants will be blessed," but He also promised Abraham property. And I don't want to go into all the politics of the Israel and the Palestine Palestinians. I I, I don't want to go into all of this. But you can see how God took one man. He didn't have any army. He didn't have any any military strength. He didn't have any big, um, you know, he didn't have nothing basically. It was just he and his wife and they obeyed God. And God was able to expand those, expand Abraham and give Abraham territory. And things Abraham in his natural strength could not do. But because God had promised Abraham, it doesn't matter how weak Abraham was. It does not matter whether Abraham was, didn't have any military strength or military capabilities. The very fact that God told him, I will give you land. I will give your descendants land. Matter of fact, um, the promised land and, 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 and Israel and I will give you this land. And God was able to bring it to pass. So when God has made a covenant, with you or when God has made a promise with you he can definitely bring it to pass um, we're gonna go deeper into the study this is just an introduction um, and, and we're gonna go deeper so hopefully tomorrow I will re release another video again talking about the Abrahamic Covenant thank you so much.